All right, we're two minutes after the hour, so welcome everyone to our Ada J Author new user webinar. I'm Jessica Frank, Ada J Author's project manager. With me today on the staff side, I have John Mayer, our executive director, and Tobias Enterejo, our Ada J backend developer. They're both um, going to jump in on different sections and talk about um, sort of what they've been working on related to Ada J Author, and um, you guys feel free to jump in at any time as well. So um, today we're going to talk about new features in A to J Author. At the end of 2019, we added a couple exciting new additions, and we wanted to highlight those for you, um, along with any up with our upcoming enhancements and new features that we're going to be working on this year. So on the agenda today, we're going to talk about our new avatars. Um, we added six additional avatars for the end user, along with skin tone and hair options. Um, so we'll talk about how to add them to existing A to J got it interviews and how they come by default in new interviews. So we'll talk about hosting on A to J.org, how that's an option um, for you now, a service we provide. We'll talk about the map enhancements, um, A to J analytics dashboard, the A to J DAT, so it's not new, but it's still not um, widely used. And so we want to really push and show you what PDFs can we can do with PDFs and that it can um, support multi-page documents. And then finally, we'll talk about upcoming enhancements and future features coming forward in this year. So the first topic to talk about today is um, are the new avatars. So this little GIF is just showing you the new avatar picker. So we have our standard two avatars, the male and the female option. And if you remember from A to J, it, said, it would say, um, choose your gender. And so we updated the way that's asked to make it more inclusive um, and to give end users more options. So all eight avatars are displayed. They have the option to pick from any one of those. They can pick from five different skin tones and eight different hair color options. And as they make different selections, the avatar little pictures automatically update. This is zoomed in a bit so you can see those a little bit better. Um, and so these options are now stored in a variable called user avatar. And I'll talk in a second about how you can use that in your existing interviews. Um, but this in no way interferes with existing interviews that are currently on La Hub Interactive or hosted, self-hosted. This is a new feature that we've added in. So your old existing interviews run perfectly fine with the choose your gender option. And if you're happy with that, you can leave it in and just have the two avatar options. You do want to take advantage of these new six new avatars and this new way of asking the question. You can add that into your existing interviews. So by default now, the interview instead of three dash gender is three dash avatar. The question itself is choose your avatar, and just like the three dash gender question in old interviews, um, it comes with the um, the new user avatar field type. It populates and sets it up how you need it. You can just use that question in your interview. You don't have to edit it at all um, or mess with that variable. Um, if you do need to ask their gender for the form purposes, you can also have a gender question using that same user gender variable in old interviews, um, in they, they can exist together. Um, when you have both of those in an interview, both user gender and user avatar, for purposes of display, user avatar will supersede. So um, if the user picks a male um, looking avatar and they've picked female as their gender, the male avatar is gonna display on the screen, but the value of female is still gonna be held in that user gender um, variable. So those two can coexist in an interview. But by default going forward, we're just asking for um, the user to pick their avatar and we're not asking for their gender anymore. This is the um, uh, enlargement of the question design editor showing you now we have a new field type called user avatar. The label just says avatar, you can change it if you want. And the variable is user avatar. And you do have to use that variable um, with that capitalization and that spacing in order to trigger the, um, the representation in the A to J viewer. If you want to add it to your existing A to J guided interviews, you can uh, download your interview from Law Hub Interactive or whatever server you're hosting it on, upload it to your A to J author account, open it up, and add a new question, add the new user avatar field, um, and then you'll have that in there. You can replace your gender, your gender question with the avatar question, or as I said, you can have both living in an interview if you need it. So 
those are the ways to uh, take advantage of the new interviews. But you as authors have to affirmatively add the user avatar option to existing guide interviews. It won't automatically populate. We didn't want to override all of the user gender questions because sometimes the forms uh, require male or female or other on, um, on their options or people are using it for logic. And so we just decided to create an additional enhancement that authors can take advantage of if they want this more, uh, more options for their end user avatars. Jessica, can you show what it looks like in the uh, viewer? I can. I mean, this is the what it looks like in the viewer, but I can pull it up. Um, if I just open up a blank interview. Is this what you wanted? You want to see? Yeah, I just want to. So, so the user starts the interview, and 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 they're and then when they get to the avatar question, this is what it looks like. Yes, and then they can just select the different options as they change skin tones and hair colors, the avatars themselves update. So they can sort of play around with picking what avatar they like um, to represent themselves. And it is saved for the purposes of the interview, but um, it's not it's not meant to be a variable that's used in a form because it ultimately doesn't matter what avatar they pick. It's just for their self-representation. Cool. So this is this is subtle, isn't it? I mean, we're we're letting people pick a few avatars. We didn't want to get into the whole um, uh, creating your character in World of Warcraft, you know, adding bling and horns and uh, you know armor and uh, weapons and stuff, you know, because the the goal of people doing a guided interview is not to um, um, pretty up their character, but to you know fill out the form. On the on the other hand, uh, um, we want people to feel, you know. The, our 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 secret sauce or our superpower is this is the avatar in some ways. Um, and I know some 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 folks think it's it's a uh, it's old fashioned or something, but you know by testing it with real self represented litigants, um, they find this to be more comfortable or or puts them in a better mental state in filling these uh, complicated legal forms out. So we're we're trying to figure out what what's a good way to 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 uh, adjust and and uh, with with the user interface that that results in a positive um, you know uh, result of uh, of people's feelings towards being involved in a stressful difficult situation of having to deal with a legal problem and not having a human being to help them. We also hope this helps for the authors who have chosen to have no user avatar in the past because they didn't want to ask the choose your gender question um, for whatever reasons. Um, and so this gives sort of a neutral way to ask people to pick um, a little avatar to represent themselves without assigning any values to it. Um, there's no uh, names to skin tone or hair color or whatever avatar they pick. Um, Not so the gender either? So if they choose a, the female or the male, it doesn't then assign the A to J author gender variable to that one? Correct. Correct. It's stored in a variable called user avatar. And so we have to name them something. So there are names on the in the back end um, in the code as to what is being picked. But those aren't uh, displayed to the end user and they aren't uh, stored in, in a user gender variable that would be going forward. Yeah, I wonder if that's like a feature where you don't have to ask the gender question. You just say pick your gen, pick your avatar. But but probably for purposes of being absolutely correct, you you have to affirmatively ask that question and and get there. You know, otherwise you're you might be disrespecting them by making an assumption based on oh I thought I was just picking a picture. I didn't know I was actually answering the legal question, what my gender is. Right. Yeah. That's why we have we let the user gender app, um, the user gender variable coexist with user avatar so that if your form requires a gender at birth or a legal gender um, marker, you can ask that separately in a follow up question. And so theoretically, someone could choose a, a, a male appearing gen, uh, avatar, but answer the what's your gender question as female. And there's no problem with that inside the code. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. So the um, second new enhancement that we released in December of 2019 was the ability to host on a to j.org. 
So Cali um, is now, Cali is the parent organization of A to J author, um, is now providing free hosting on A to J.org for anyone making A to J guided interviews for self-represented litigants. So if you are um, interested in hosting, perhaps you aren't an LSC funded legal aid organization or um, a court partner of Law Help Interactive, so you can't take advantage of Law Help Interactive, um, you can host on a2j.org. We have student projects that are that were in uh, testing during the whole last semester on a2j.org. Um, it's really meant to sort of open up to anybody who needs a place to put a guided interview for somebody to access it. Um, and so when you publish to a2j.org, if you, if you want to publish to a2j.org, now under the Publish tab within your interview, you have the options, the standard options of downloading your interview, publishing to Law Help Interactive, or right there in the middle, publishing to a2j.org. And once you click that, um, a new uh, window opens up, the a2j.org tab opens, and you can put all kinds of metadata into your interview. So what state is it meant to be hosted in? Do you want it to be live? or do you want it to be in demo mode? Demo mode, demo mode is watermarked. Um, and then it produces a URL that you can put on your website, you can share with others. Um, it also works with the A to J DAT, the, the templates, the document assembly tool. Um, and so you can host A to J guide interviews that have an A to J front end and an A to J back end. Um, if you're looking to host anything with a hot docs, back end, we don't have a hot doc server, um, so you would still need to host that on Law Help Interactive. But anything that is strictly A to J author can be hosted on A to J.org for free. Um, if you're interested in hosting it, there is a section on our website about it, how to enable it, um, how to use it, sort of the terms of service, and all of that. Um, so publish to A to J.org, try it out. Even if you want to just use it for testing purposes, um, you can do that as well. And we built this for, for lots of reasons, but one of the ones that we're already seeing um, return on investment is uh, with law schools. So, you know, we worked with uh, 20 or 25 law schools who have taught, <clears throat> pardon me, A to J author <clears throat> as part of a course. And um, what, one, of the, one of the problems that we had in the early days was we would have to train people in both A to J author and in hot docs. That became um, uh, not impossible, but just uh, difficult to do in a single semester. Um, and it wasn't the goal. The goal wasn't to, was to just demo new software for students. The goal was for them to uh, gain a certain level of mastery and to actually finish a project. So now, since they're all in, since they're working entirely within A to J Author, uh, there's less training. They can they can spend more time on the project and on the legal, you know, uh, automation side rather than the, I have to learn a new piece of software side. Um, and, and that makes it easier for more students to get introduced to, uh, to legal process automation. Thanks. So then another new enhancement that isn't um, in production yet, but will be coming soon, um, is a map enhancement. And so we're working on a current TIG with um, Legal Services of North Carolina. And one of those is to create an enhancement to the map so that it is easier to sketch together an interview, to clean up existing maps, to see sort of that that bigger picture, the forest for the trees. So what this GIF is just showing you here is I picked an old interview, um, and I you'll see when it when it goes back in a second. To, it was messy. I just opened up an interview, and then I did right there's the messy part, and I clicked auto cleanup. And part of the enhancements is that it automatically organizes it by step. Um, now you can quickly add new pages to an interview and you can connect them via buttons. So potentially up to three buttons per page. If a button is active, which means it has a destination to go to, it's, it's that yellowy orange color and it shows the connection. So this lets you quickly see how your interview flows from one question to the next and it lets you quickly sketch out an interview. So ideally, the idea would be that when you start the interview drafting process, instead of having to go to the pages tab and add page, add page, add page, um, and then go into each one, into the question design editor, add the buttons, um, and then connect the buttons to the next question and so forth, you could quickly slap together um, a rough outline of your interview and then go back and edit um, your, your text of your questions and um, the, the meat of the question, but everything is sort of the structure is already there. And so this is currently sitting in our staging environment. If you all are interested in it and you don't already have a staging account, 
feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you a staging account. Um, but you can go and play with this right now. And I'm I'm half convinced that this will be <clears throat> this will become a default. This this will be the place where everybody will start because um, I mean we figured this out. I mean it's not that hard to figure out. Um, almost uh, every time we talked to uh, trained authors or or watched what they were doing, they would start with uh, whiteboards or post-it notes on a board. You know they would um, you know let me cut to the chase. So so there's two big technical problems. One of them is the detail of typing in the, the text for the questions and making the little buttons. And then there's the big picture of which question goes where and, and how do they branch and how do I not get lost in my own decision tree? You know, especially when it gets to be a non-trivial um, guided interview, you know, more than 50 or more than 100 questions. Um, and so we thought, well, let's see if we can speed things up for the author if they don't have to use an outside tool like SmartDraw or Lucidchart or Visio or MindMeister or MindMap or FreeMind, any of those mapping tools, if they can build the map inside A to J Author, and at the same time as they're building it, they're actually it's 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 a running guided interview, so they could just create a whole bunch of blank you know temp, uh, blank question templates, you know connect them all up and say okay on this screen we'll be asking this and on this screen we'll be explaining this aspect of the law and on this screen we'll be asking this and then we'll, we'll branch and they can get the whole flowchart branch part, you know, worked out without having to uh, delve into the details of what actually appears on the screen, you know, and, and then go back and forth and easily, uh, well, hopefully more easily adjust, you know, how, how those things work and see them, you know. Um, some people think in terms of maps and flowcharts and other people don't. Um, uh, sometimes I've worked on projects where the, the subject matter expert you know, would, would send me a Word document, and it was like, you know, one of those choose your own adventure books, right? It would say, ask this question, you know, this is question one, you know, at the end of this, go to question two if they answered yes, and go to question three if they answered no. And, um, you know, uh, and then by the time they got to question 47, you know, jumping to question 56, it would be, there would be a mistake or something, or and it would be impossible to resolve from reading it, or it would be painful to do so. Whereas a, a map like this, you could instantly see, well, what happens after you ask this question? Oh, you should go here. You know, there's a memory palace sort of concept here of, of, of applying a location to, to a concept so that it's easier for your brain to, to see how that works. Anyhow, that's the goal. Um, we, 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 I expect to add, you know, even more capabilities and features to this in the future, but only after we've, uh, you know, gotten a good idea of what what works and what doesn't work okay now I'll turn it over to Tobias to talk about our A to J analytics and the dashboard coming all right uh, so we've also been developing uh, an analytics tool uh, so as you probably know we've been collecting analytics uh, through the age of the viewer, uh, since that should be 2018, not 2017, but, and we've been using Matomo, uh, and as a, which is an alternative to Google Analytics, so to help ensure your privacy. Um, can you click on, yeah, sorry, thank you. Uh, so we collect through our analytics uh, about half the IP address uh, to an anonymized user, which will give us the rough general location, uh, you know, whether the visitor's new, uh, since they got a unique ID, uh, the type of device, whether it's like a cell phone or a computer, uh, the browser they're using, the language, uh, the OS, uh, and whether they click a pop-up, learn more, than any kind of other event that the AJ uh, viewer uh, launches. And it also collects the path of the interview, uh, which is kind of typical for any kind of analytics system. Uh, so right now, uh, what you, would do if you want to get this kind of information, you typically would contact Jessica, who uh, would go through our Matomo system and generate a report for you. Uh, we're developing a dashboard that will automatically generate this report. Um, and you can see how the, the AJ guided interviews are used, and uh, you'll be able to, to collect the, the data you need and write your like reports, like grant reports, uh, very quickly uh, without contacting Jessica. And all this is planned to be 
accessible by any by any author uh, through the web. Uh, and after we show you a little demo of how this works, I would uh, certainly open for any kind of feature requests or uh, if you want to kind of, kind of tweaks, uh, certainly contact us and let us know. Uh, so next slide shows a little bit what this kind of what kind of graphs would look like. Um, obviously, some bunch of charts and tables. Um, let's see, if we can pull this up. Uh, there. Yeah, that's going by way too fast to read. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, well, is there anything? Is there any graphs that people are? Uh, I think maybe you can put it in the chat. Is there any kind of graphs that people are, are kind of interested in seeing? That's pretty much what the live demo. Like this is the live demo looks pretty much exactly like this, but Sessi is way too slow or too fast. Um, and and I wouldn't be surprised if you don't have if you don't know because we're 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 at a point too where we have more data than we have clues. In other words, we we have, we have a ton of data now about guided interviews, including you know how much time people spend on each question, um, you know what paths they take. In some cases, that's unusual analytics. It's it's, it's unusual in the sense that uh, Matomo uh, won't automatically turn it into a nice pie chart, or a pie chart doesn't doesn't describe what we want to do. We, you know, we can imagine ways to display that information, and we're working on on how best to do that. Um, you know, so so the the the, the it's we're we're peeling an onion here. You know, first we had to have a system whereby we can collect data, make sure that it was absolutely secure. That's why no Google Analytics, um, and and then and then we can and now now we have to start asking questions of that data, and then we have to filter that into well what what can we automate that we can provide back to the authors or to the organizations so that they have effective feedback to make decisions about improving. Uh, their guided interviews, and and that's a long chain of information and and thinking that that uh, you know only begins once you once we start collecting data and thinking hard about it. Um, and so we, we I anticipate coming back to the community a lot to say, well, we're we're trying this and we're trying this. You know what what will what will help you make decisions? And I got to admit, I don't know what helps make me uh, make decisions about things. Uh, we're going through almost the exact same process with um, with Cali lessons, which get used, um, you know, uh, five or 600,000 times a year. And we don't know what the numbers can tell us about learning or about pathways through learning, um, you know, and, and so uh, this is definitely a journey for us. We did have a, um, a comment in the chat box about, from Carl asking, could you show a graph about how often people click on pop-ups or just anything about pop-up use? So that's a requested feature, Tobias. Right. Yes, I'm working on that. That's that's one of the best. That isn't on like this this screen uh, inside of the live demo. But yeah, that's definitely something I'm trying to uh, figure out how to display properly. Um, yeah, we have them tagged in Matomo. So in like the reports that I, that I manually pull, we can sort of pull up that information about specific interviews and learn more. So those are being tagged. It just has to be pulled into the automated yeah. report. Yeah, all that data is it's all there, um, and especially uh, things like 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 John was saying, the uh, the path of the interview. It's just how to display that in a way that's not uh, even more overwhelming than this and <laughs> what's up here. Um, that's that's a bit of a challenge, but yeah, that's a good feature which we're working on. So cool, thank you. Um, are we good with the screenshot? Uh, yeah, if anyone, else, if there's no other question, no one wants to see anything specific. Yeah, there's. Cool. Yeah, and you can all feel free if you do have questions about the analytics report, or maybe if you want to be an early tester, or talk to Tobias about it. Um, his email is just Tobias at Cali dot org. Um, if you can put that in the chat, Tobias, so they can reach out to you, or you can reach out to me, and I will forward it on to Tobias. So. Um, on any of these, we'd like user feedback. So if you hear from your end users about things they like in the A to J view or don't like, or if you as authors um, have feedback on how things are working or aren't working in A to J author, I love to hear it. Um, we build sort of our bug priority list and feature enhancements um, by what is required by grants, but also by the squeakiest wheel model. So if something is really bothering you, reach out to us, um, and likely that can get prioritized to get fixed. Um, pretty quickly. 
So I just wanted to bring up in this section um, a reminder about the A to J DAT, the document assembly tool, and that you can create text templates, which have been around since 2016, and PDF templates, which have been around for about a year, year and a half now, um, which allow you to upload existing uh, PDFs um, and automate on top of those. So you can upload um, existing PDFs, you can add variables to it, you can adjust the boxes here as a little video is showing you, you add the variable to it, um, either creating them from scratch or using variables that are already in your interview, um, and then it populates your document. Um, it's actually pretty fast to create variables on the fly here in the A to J DAT and then reuse them in the interview. So um, for those of you that liked A to J 4, where you could create variables on the fly, as you're authoring, you'll like this section. Um, and it is a one-stop shop, so you don't have to leave A to J to have a complete uh, document assembly package, even one built on existing court forms or existing PDFs that you have. Um, this is just showing how uh, you can assign variables. You can also have multi-page documents, so you're not limited to a single page uh, form within an interview, and you can have multiple templates or multiple forms within each interview itself. So the A to J guide interview is sort of the, the parent, and you can have multiple uh, children documents that can be conditionally inserted. So um, if have children TF is true, if live in X county, if have this circumstance, whatever it is that um, would create a different document assembly package for somebody based on their situation and what they've answered in the interview. You can have those conditionally inserted templates as well. Um, and the multi-page, like I pulled this one from the Illinois Courts website and just changed the name to the land of A to J author. Um, but this is an actual uh, application for a fee waiver in Illinois. And so these are real court forms that can be automated fairly quickly um, using the A to J DAT. And then just some sort of upcoming enhancements to the um, that'll be coming up in uh, future code pushes um, in the next couple of weeks. So currently, um, the first one is the macro. So in the My Progress bar, the macro itself displays, including the variable rather than the value. So we fix that in the new code push that'll be coming up. And instead of the macro displaying, the value that is the same as it's displayed in the question will show up in the My Progress bar. So um, it won't look like some code is showing um, to your end user. It'll just look like however your question looks. Um, and then skipping down to used by. Um, so in the current version and production, um, if a button uses a value, um, it's not necessarily tagged in the used by. So if you search for variables in the variables tab and you tried to see where they were used, it wouldn't show you if they were used in buttons. Um, which can be problematic if you're trying to clean up your interview or you're trying to find where something is used and you know you used it and you just can't find it. So we have updated and now used by shows where it's in text or help, what field it's in, and if it's used by buttons. Um, and so when the code push comes through, find usage um, will show you all of the places in the interview where your variable is being used. And if I understand it right, you could always find all the variable if you ran like the uh, report, right? But then that required you to do that control F yes. search, search, search thing. Yeah. yeah, a full report would have shown it um, being used in a button. It just wasn't triggered by this find usage button. Gotcha. In the variables tab. And then another, um, a feature that we've been talking about on our tech team is formatting. And so um, in A to J4, we would force formatting in and for like phone number or social security number in terms of the American way of the three, three, four with the dashes or the parentheses around it. Um, and in A to J6, we um, aren't forcing any formatting on it. And so um, if your form required it in hot docs, there was a hack that was created by Bart Earl from Capstone. Um, if you want to know more about that, reach out to me. But We've had authors ask about ways in which they could format their users' answers so that it would display back a particular way. Um, and so the option was to come up with something like a function called format, where then the end or the author could dictate what the text string, how it appeared. And we talked through on our team, Tobias actually came up with the idea of having some pre-programmed ones like phone um, on the US and Canadian way with 
can, like US CAN 1 would be just the dashes, US CAN 2 would be the parentheses with the dashes, uh, Mexico would have the 244, um, and we would be able to include European ways of doing phone numbers or postal codes or social security numbers or ID numbers, whatever it is, we can sort of build a um, repository of ways that can be formatted, but also to have the format function to allow the author to specify how the data is supposed to be represented. So this is just another way, another feature to be added on to A to J so that you can make your user's experience a little bit cleaner. So if you want to, um, they enter their phone number and you say, you said your phone number was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, zero, then you can you, you can format that properly so that it looks how people expect a phone number to look. Um, and then you can also use that data in the ultimate form. So those, the, the, the macro and the used by are coming in the next code push. The format is a future feature that we're working on um, through 2020. Um, just a note, our next webinar for March is not the first Thursday of the month because I will be at the SRLN conference in Nashville on, on that Thursday. So the date is March 12th at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So that is the second Thursday in March. Um, are there any questions or anything, uh, John or Tobias, you want to add? Sure. So LOIs are coming up, uh, letters of intent. The TIG, the next TIG cycle in in a, in a couple of months. Um, please, please, please consider doing a project where there are lots of low-hanging fruit forms in many states. Um, we, we've uh, um, we're participating with the Access to Justice, that's T O, um, and Miguel uh, to to hire a law student this summer to to uh, create a, a comprehensive list of the forms that nobody's done yet. Um, unfortunately, it won't be ready until uh, later, you know, in the summer. Um, but uh, but if you've got stuff that you want to do, um, and and you think we can help you, which we can, we'll you know provide training, provide support, um, add features, you know, uh, please include us in your in your TIG LOIs. Um, we'll be happy to provide a, a letter of support, and uh, we'll even discuss language that you might need for for uh, bringing us on board. Great. If y'all have questions, you can or comments, you can put them in the chat or the questions, or you can raise your hands and I can unmute you as well. Okay. Not seeing any new ones. Um, as always, feel free to reach out. Um, my email is jessica at cali.org. Um, and I can connect you to Tobias if you're interested in sort of the A to J backend stuff or the analytics or hosting. Um, or we can talk about, as John said, the grant writing process or um, any technical issues you're having with A to J, you can always reach out. So thank you all for attending and we'll see you next month on the 12th.